Each spring on the cruel streets of suburbia, a truly remarkable journey takes place, as it has done for centuries. A peculiar breed of male Homo sapiens must make a courageous pilgrimage from its nest to the downtown mating grounds. The Bromo sapiens, or bros, are driven by the overpowering urge to reproduce, to assure the survival of their breed. This is Mother Nature at her very best. To thoroughly comprehend the story of the bro, we must first examine its history. Western historians believe that the name bro was derived from their unique method of communicating. You don't understand. Titties were out to here, bro. So I got this lipstick lesbian fucking straddle with me, bro. She grabs her rock hard rack, bro. Says, what do you think of these, bro? Lesbian number one who had propositioned me for sex earlier, bro, calls the other lesbian a hooker. Lesbian number one runs at lesbian number two, bro. Woo! Hair being pulled, punches being thrown. Rock hard titties with torpedo nipples popping out of shirts, bro. You needed a co-pilot, bro. Where were you? Rock hard titties. Beep, 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 beep. It wasn't even cold. Unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. <laughs> The term bro is thought to have been made popular during the Renaissance by none other than da Vinci. However, it was not Leonardo who coined the term, but his lesser-known alcoholic brother, Brad. Overshadowed by his distinguished elder brother's achievements in anatomy, art and engineering, Brad da Vinci moved to Greece, where he became well known for his Greeks Gone Wild parties. Whilst Leonardo's works included the first helicopter and the Mona Lisa, Brad's most notable invention was the first hands-free beer hat. For decades, it was widely accepted that the first bros, the bro magnums, migrated into America via the Bering Strait. But in 1982, the discovery of what appeared to be an ancient party raft on Catalina Island turned the anthropological community upside down. Was this wicker keg the handiwork of the Bromagnon, or a meticulously executed hoax? Driven to extinction 10,000 years ago, the debate on their origin rages on today. However, this 1967 footage, shot by amateur cameraman Jack Hayes, clearly depicts a living Bromagnon, apparently lost and confused in a forest near Mendocino, California. Considered to be the unofficial bro capital of the world, dozens flock to the town each year, hoping to catch a glimpse of the Mendocino Bro Magnon, or Mendy. Modern North American bromos can usually be identified by their backward-facing caps and their t-shirts. They're not to be confused with the North American indie rocker, who wears vintage t-shirts or skinny ties and is often much slighter in build, ranging anywhere from 43 to as little as 34 kilograms. Lines blurred in 1978 when archaeologists unearthed a 1,200-year-old fossilized indie rocker with an arm span of 170 centimeters. This would make its estimated weight far greater than the average bro. Gray areas like this make it nearly impossible to perfectly categorize any human breed. For example, the indie rocker is commonly mistaken for the trilogy geek, who shares the same fervor for bitter online message board posting as the hip-hop backpacker, who, as a result of his time indoors on the computer, has a high sensitivity to natural sunlight, much like the PC gamer, who, of course, bears a striking resemblance to the common household nerd. But the trait that separates the bro from all other breeds is its ritual of replacing its outer shell at the arrival of mating season. Like a caterpillar from a cocoon, the bro sheds its casual attire and puts on the good shirt. This ensemble is the pinnacle of human evolution. 
Open buttons draw attention to his prominent chestal region. Angle stripes encourage females to tilt their heads coquettishly, noticing his knack for style. The jeans are a rugged counterpoint, a remnant of the bro's descent from cowboy breeds. The black dress shoes make it known to potential mates and rivals that he means business. Homo sapiens is the only known species to use artificial pheromones to mask its natural scent. Of all the breeds, bros are the most liberal with their use of these odiferous compounds. With his skin richly marinated and good shirt ironed, the alpha bro is finally ready to mate. This is the nest of the Alpha Bro, where he will greet each member of his pack with a ceremonial bro hug. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? The Beta Bro is the Alpha Bro's best friend from scouting days. Should the perils of the journey claim the Alpha's life, the Beta will automatically assume command. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? The Bro Bros are bros that are actually Real brothers. Sup, bro? Sup, bro? Sup, bro? Sup, bro? The nano bro is the most inexperienced bro. The fuck? I, I, I was just. She. she he. Uh, what are you doing? You know, this... Deviation from the traditional bro hug is unacceptable. Why don't you two get a room? Bro, stop sword fighting. <laughs> Looks like they want to make out. Which one of you three wieners wants to make out? With my fist! Dad, where are your goddamn car keys? The role of Alpha is bestowed upon the bro who has access to the largest, most inefficient mode of transportation. This brings us to the rule of fives. Brad da Vinci's lost papers reveal his most sacred law. The grouping of five males led by an alpha will always catapult females into a state of maximum sexual hysteria. Throughout history, da Vinci's rule of fives has been proven time and time again. It is obvious which of these packs enjoyed a lesser degree of success. Shotgun. Duh. I got bitch. Called it. Oh, wait! You really should bring a hostess gift. Now, we've got the potholders or the chewy nut brownies. Mom, we're not going to a party. We're going to party. Oh. Yo, bump that shit, bro. If you need to be out after midnight, call. Shut your damn pie hole, Mom. Close the goddamn garage. So, our journey begins.